Right, got it. Um, so I'm Amanda, I am the Chief Executive of Symbol and Action Funder. And um, we're basically a social enterprise that's been going for about 10 years delivering community campaigns. We're also a B Corp and our whole purpose is to drive change from the grassroots up. And we passionately believe in the power of business to do good. And our role is really to help companies connect meaningfully with communities. So whatever solution is appropriate, that's what we try and do. But what I wanted to start with is just talk for a moment about community groups. So it's estimated that there are between 350 to 500,000 community organizations all around the UK. It's in a massive sector of people doing great stuff at the grassroots level. A community group is designed, defined as being a group or an organization that works for the public benefit. So they can be charities, social enterprises, community businesses, but also just gatherings, informal gatherings of people who come together to do something that they feel is really needed in their community. So normally these kind of groups are set up by people who live in the local area and are identified that there's a need for a particular activity or service, or there might be gaps in services, or some really essential services just aren't very accessible to people. Normally these groups will have some kind of governing document that outlines what it is they exist to achieve. But after that, the structure, as you've just heard, can vary enormously. Some can be local branches of bigger charities, but many of them are run by volunteers or with skeleton staff. What we absolutely know from our 10 years of working with these organisations is they're brilliant at making a very little bit of money go a really long way. And, you know, they just because they use the power of the community to help them deliver what they do, now, what we saw during the course of, of the pandemic was this, we all experienced this incredible shift of our horizons into our local communities. It was enforced on all of us. And we witnessed an amazing outpouring of need to connect with people and to help each other, whether that was through the setting up of loads of mutual aid organizations or your street WhatsApp group. And of course, the 700,000 volunteers, people who volunteered to support the NHS. So this amazing reconnection back into local communities. And we saw companies really, really wanting to support their employees where they lived and the communities in which they were operating, as well as their customers and as well as people in their supply chain. So there was a really interesting refocus of where people were looking to be supported. Of course, the most difficult area was, was for the community groups themselves, who suddenly had this terrible double whammy of um, you know, need their services being needed more than ever, and yet their ability to gain money, secure money, was massively compromised. So we know from research that we've done that actually funding is the most important thing that keeps these community organisations going, but it's really tricky for them to do that. Um, so. As an organization and having manually run grant funding campaigns for about 10 years, we were pushed and decided to really accelerate our focus on automating the process of enabling companies to support community groups and for community groups to access corporate funding in a way that there was very, very hard for them to do before. I'm sure you're aware that if, you, if you're a small organization trying to access funding, you quite often have to fill out huge application forms, wait several months, and then normally eight or nine times out of 10, you're not successful. And all the time you're spending hours and hours filling out application forms, you're not doing the work that actually needs to be done on the ground. And on the other hand, we also know how incredibly generous companies are. In the UK, something like companies donate two billion pounds a year to communities. It's a huge amount of money. And we know that companies also support their staff to do fundraising and make donations to charities. But 2% of that money goes to the small local community organizations. So what we're hoping is that perhaps inspired by today, people might add in the concept of giving to local communities as part of their portfolio 
of the great work that people are probably already doing. So that's a very quick whiz over community groups and a tiny bit about Action Funder and why we were prompted to do it. And now what I'd like to do is hand over to Linda and Oli to talk about the insights that they've had into how they do charitable giving through their companies. So I'd like to start with Linda. Perhaps you could kick us off, Linda, and, and let us know your thoughts. Thanks, Amanda. Thank, can I first of all compliment you on two things? One, for being so gracious and saying that there were technical problems, because unless it was everybody else, I think that was me, the technical problem. So thank you for that. And also, most interesting background that I've seen for quite a long time. So really loving your setup. That's great. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, I guess I, I, I'll start with who I am and who we are as a company. Um, I run the brand marketing and communications team at Sir Robert McAlpine. We're a 152-year-old construction company. Um, I'm not responsible for charitable giving. Nobody is, which is a common problem in lots of big organisations. So it's something everybody wants to do. But nobody is really resourced or responsible for it, which I think is part of the challenge that we had. But um, if I step back a little bit, our construction business is 152 years old. And we started with one guy, um, Robert McAlpine, being asked to fit. He was completely down on his uppers, had no money in Scotland, was really struggling to look after his family. And he was offered a job to fix a chimney and he had no money to get any labour or parts to do so. So he asked his friend, who was a butcher, to lend him some money. And he did. He lent him £2.45, which I think was a lot of money back in 1869. Um, and because of that, he was able to undertake his first construction job. And we're now a billion pound company. And we, um, we have over 2000 employees and we're still run by the same family and they are in our business every day. And that sense of somebody taking a chance on you has stayed with them. So that sense of being responsible and wanting to give back and give everybody else a helping hand where they can is something that absolutely cuts through the core of this business. And as a construction business, that probably doesn't sound like it goes hand in hand, but here it very much does. So um, back in, I think it was just as the pandemic hit, we were about to undertake um, our first grant with Action Funder. And we were, were about to do this because we were introduced to them because our giving was completely chaotic. So nobody owned it. We were doing loads of good things. We had corporate partners that we were signed up with that we all loved but weren't really sure what we were doing so every now and then someone would do, would do a bike ride or cut their hair off which I always think is just so brave um then we had loads of individual giving people doing bake sales for a b and c and somebody doing dress you know in ridiculous odd socks one day and it was just all this stuff was happening but there was no coordination of it and so from a brand and marketing and communications perspective I was a bit like this is this everyone's doing all this great stuff but I can't talk about it because I can't draw it together in any way so from from a purely selfish perspective it was quite difficult but actually from a really um quite hard-nosed business perspective too the more that we were trying to work with the public sector the more we were being required to talk about our giving to talk about the amount that we were giving back to communities and to measure that and we just had no way of doing that so chaos reigned we were doing great stuff but with absolutely minimal impact I would suggest. So we set up a trial fund by Action Funder in Manchester. Manchester was a region that we'd done some work but we wanted to do more in so we wanted to deepen our roots in that community. Um, so we set up our first trial grant and um, Sembel helped us by first of all explaining to us how we would do that but holding our hands through the whole process and actually setting us up um, with local contacts on the council etc and they joined us on a judging panel now it was great because the local contacts really knew the charitable organizations and community groups that were asking for the funding and they could really help us understand it we were also able to put local employees on a judging panel which helped them to feel connected to something in the business and it was it was great because those local employees were able to develop relationships with the local councils who one day might be our clients so it had multiple benefits really and we did this as a trial and it was a huge success and everybody who worked on that project kind of stepped away and said that felt a bit different that that was really nice that was really enjoyable you know oh I, I felt a bit warm and fuzzy doing that which in construction it's not much warm and fuzzy I can tell you so we we decided to go ahead and shift our giving 
in a way, instead of everybody doing individual things, to shift it towards using the Action Funder platform. And so this year we did eight grants across the UK. We gave over, I think, £110,000 so far to community groups. Um, each of those was in a different regional location. So we were able to invite employees from the local region or who had a natural affinity to that region to be able to volunteer to be on the judging panels. And I think the, the two things that really stand out to me, one is that we got to know each other far better than we did before on those judging panels. Like instead of just the head, we were getting to know the heart. We were understanding when we were looking at the applications from the amazing groups and it's very hard to pick who to give the money to, but what, what a privilege to be able to do that. As we were learning about the different groups, people were disclosing part of themselves and we were learning why that charity would matter to them. And it, so it really started to deepen our relationships as employees, which was just phenomenal, but also it gave us access to community groups in a way that I just couldn't do before. We, as I said, we're not resourced. We couldn't I didn't know how to go through the due diligence of finding a community group and checking that they were above board and it was okay for us to give money to them and that it would all be okay. We just didn't have that. And we now had a, a fast track to do that. Um, and so we did these eight grants. Everybody who was on the judging panel felt more deeply connected. We saw in our employee surveys that kind of pride in the company and connectivity went up in a, you know, a really um, aligned timeline. But really important we got to know those community groups and we got to see the impact that it was having at a really on the ground level and we can now follow those we and we do we are we are very good social media friends with quite a few of them we try and keep in touch with them so I think our story is very much that it took us from a position of great intent with massive amounts of chaos <laughs> to a really quick and fast track easy way to have greater impact through our giving and then help employee engagement along the way but also help us be able to report that impact in a quite a, a business hard-nosed way for when we were bidding for future work or trying to develop relationships so it's a really whistle-stop tour of how it's been for us so far so um, and I'm more than happy to dig into any of the detail with anyone on this call or afterwards if our details are shared. Hope that's helpful, Amanda. That's brilliant, Linda. Uh, just a, a quick follow up before we go into Ollie, but just on the results, have you had any results through from any of the projects and around the impact? Yeah, we have. And, and it, I think it always astounds me because we get an impact report, which which you would think would was really, you know, sort of non-emotional but when because because it, it tells you about impressions and you know you've reached this many, but when it says you how many people that that small grant has reached and, and how many people in total I think that's always really astounding so we do get impact reports with facts of figures this amount of money hit this amount of people was able to go on to do this but the the real juicy and lovely and enjoyable bits that come back are the stories that come back and the pictures and that often we get um we get things sent to us via social media and our direct mail from the individual charities themselves giving us little updates and thanking us or sending us a quote from somebody that you know wanted to pass that on and that's the stuff that you know all the figures are great and we need them but it's the stories that are they're really special and we just didn't we didn't have access to anything like that before that's fantastic really lovely to hear thank you so much so store up any questions you might have for linda and uh, let's move on to Oli. And Oli, we'd love to hear your story now too, please. Of course. Hi, hi everyone. Um, and that's it was interesting hearing some of the sort of pain points there because um, we we shared them. Uh, and uh, our business is a factor many many times smaller than Robert McAlpine. Now uh, we were founded. Uh, we're a law firm uh, by by day trade, uh, and we were founded ten years ago. Um, we are fourteen in number. Uh, 10 lawyers and then support staff. So we truly, we were a very slow burning startup and um, sometimes call ourselves an SME, but um, to, to the point about not having a dedicated um, sort of uh, charity uh, representative, uh, that, that was very much us. That's, that's something that uh, together with a colleague um, I've uh, stepped into this, this year. And I mean, it's just from a personal perspective where we are um, coming up to the end of the year, without uh, assembled support, it, it simply just it just couldn't have happened. So more on that uh, in um, sort of towards the end of the intro. 
Um, we we have um, always had um, a hand in uh, in charitable giving. Um, Roger Blears, who founded the firm ten years ago, he founded the charitable trust back in two thousand and five. At the time, it was called the BCT Charitable Trust. Uh, since rebranded, and um, it's operated through uh, the receipt of um, fairly ad hoc income from our corporate clients. So we've always done um, pro bono work, or there are um, ad hoc structuring arrangements where the VCT trust uh, would uh, receive dividends and put those dividends to use. And the giving was ad hoc as well. So uh, our objective has always been uh, the education uh, and well-being of young people, and within that, within those parameters, uh, grants have always uh, been allocated to 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 um, young people in sectors such as music, sports, uh, the natural environment when benefiting young people, um, arts and crafts. But it it's been by its very nature ad hoc. So. Um, specific charity challenges is a good example if someone was doing something to raise money uh, the charitable trust would, would make a donation and um, if there were one-off events that would that was also a fairly usual uh, grantee opportunity uh, and it's it's sort of rumbled along for well over a decade now in that same format um, giving over 350 grand in total so not insignificant amount and um, uh, I was just, while Linda was speaking, I just checked when the first communication I had with Semble was, and it was back in March. So um, it's actually quite amazing to think that from March to now, um, we've, we've refined our model, um, used the platform to, to have a, 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 an outreach, which, which we've not been able to achieve really in, in, in sort of over 10 years. Um, and I think, um, Whilst I can't speak to uh, the numerous employee surveys which which Linda has, um, and and the multiple offices and, and being able to do things in local cities, I think the the the, the sort of shining star for me is, is is simply where the technology is now, um, and what that has meant for us as an SME because um, we were reacting to, to to grantees getting in touch or connections getting in touch, taking a view. Um, and then, and then the trustees would would allocate. Um, obviously, through the power of the, the dashboard and the and the and the campaign scheme, um, we received. I'm, I'm sorry, just for background, we we um, run one campaign, um, and that campaign closed in September. And um, even sort of having it open during uh, the summer months, we had uh, around about forty applications, um, pretty much all within the scope of our. Um, objective and um, we deployed uh, the funding last month I believe and um, we've we've started to have a trickle through of updates which I, I'll probably um, whether I come on to or not uh, but I suppose it was your, your question at the end there Amanda but we, we have had one letter in particular uh, which has been um, great to receive and that's um, from a Olympic running coach who runs a South London running school uh, for underprivileged um, athletes and they were one of our bigger grantees and um we we had we had a, a sort of full full types and signed letter last week to say how much that meant um we've, we've held some back from the funds to um grant to that particular grantee again in the new year we we, we spoke with Seglin about the idea that rather than maybe a lump sum at one point we could stage some of this this micro fund across um a number of months and and some have been able to accommodate that so yeah, it's interesting. It's I guess to sort to of, sort of wrap up, sort of my introduction is is that Robert McAlpine and R. W. Blears are, are such different ends of the spectrum in terms of size and, and age, but um, we we definitely share similar pain points in terms of um, uh, deploying technology um, and a platform to be able to reach people we otherwise couldn't have done, and um, it's it's just been a massive success and and I. Not having touched on it yet, but it has been something internally that has resonated uh, very well um, with those that have been involved on the judging panel. How did you define who would get involved in the judging panels, Lonnie? <laughs> it was well, it's slightly dictated by um, the, uh, um, the the 
um, work from home, not work from home, rotor that we're switching on and off at the moment. Um, I managed to I managed to allocate it to a day when we had a uh, majority of people in the office, uh, and then we just ran it ran it one lunchtime, uh, which was great. So it was a, it was a it was a pretty broad church of, of people. We had we had uh, Roger was there, but then we also had some of the more junior staff um, involved as well. So it was. Um, yeah, it was, it was it was a sort of um, it was a good judging panel, and it was um, it was a, well, a fun at lunchtime and uh, your average. So, so yeah, that was that was how we did it. Brilliant, and uh, thank you very much, Ollie, for that. And I'm just going to add one extra question, um, which is just how did you find it straightforward to set up a fund, having never done something like this before? Um, yeah, we did. I mean, I, we we act for clients who raise funds for profit the whole time uh, and they're incredibly they're often incredibly complex etc and I've seen and there are plenty of people trying to do what Semble do um, on the on the for-profit side and uh, to be honest I, I, I have yet to see someone truly crack it because there's a lot of complexity around uh, around sort of fundraising for profit the, the the speed of deployment and the the, the ease of using the uh, assemble dashboard uh, was a different experience um, and so familiar with the with the idea of, of, of promoting and then running a campaign um, but it was all new to us uh, me and my sort of co uh, co-representative um, and so no, we found um, we, we sort of had Segalin sort of every step of the way um, just making sure that we would sort of you know on, um, on our roadmap because there was a roadmap to the campaign in terms of promoting things and then um, whilst the race was open, I, I was getting cold feet because we were raising in August and Seglin was saying, no, so it's very different to sort of raising, you know, raising, you know, funds for profit when everyone's on holiday, you know, you will have community groups um, applying during, during the height of summer. And that was the case. So, uh, no, it was good. Brilliant. Thank you. Right. Um, I'd love to open it up now and get other people to join the discussion. So perhaps if I'm just thinking, what's the best way of doing it? Perhaps if you do a hand, can you do a hand raise, and then we can go to you, or or just turn off your microphone and jump in. So who has a question for either myself or Ollie or Linda, or reflections? It doesn't have to be a question, just reflections. Anyone to kick us off? Charlotte. Got to go. Thanks, Charlotte, for joining us. Okay. Um, um, jump in with a question if that's okay. Yes, please do. Um, I have one for you, Amanda, which is a quick one because people have been using the name Semble as well as Action Funder. If you could kind of speak to that for a minute and clear up what that means. Sure. Um, my question to both uh, Linda and Ollie. Um, is as a national and international company, um, how do you each manage the fact that with Action Funder you're giving to local community um, on a very local scale, despite the fact that you are either a national or an, an international organisation? Why don't you, you respond first, Linda? I'll clear up symbol at the end. I guess really simply, um, <laughs> Everyone who works here lives somewhere. <laughs> Everyone who works here has somewhere that is their village, their town, their city that matters to them. And for us to really, and, and also we're building projects, you know, we're not, all our projects are not Big Ben, although one of them is, some of them are student accommodation in Durham, you know. So we are working in communities. So it's really important actually that when we do giving, we don't just do big charities, such as our corporate partner is, you know, Maggie's Cancer Charity. We want to be able to benefit the place that we are working and the place that our people live. And that was really hard to do before, whereas these very local community groups are now accessible to us. So as we move to build, you know, a new arena or football training stadium somewhere, we're now able to say, right, that postcode, we're going to be employing people there and we're going to be actually in the local people's lives for quite some time. So let's set up a fund there, let's get local people involved, let's start to connect with the community and we're able to do that now. So it, it, it sort of becomes part of our business project planning rather than a separate tangent of giving. It's now part of, oh, we've got a new project, it's in Durham. 
what will the grant look like? You know, it just becomes part of business as usual, which is really nice instead of it being on the side, Lorna. Yeah, I know we, we, we thought about this at the time of um, when we were drawing up our scope and um, obviously we set our, our sector at a um, directed young people and whether we then sort of restricted it also by geography. Um, we have, we're a single office, we're, we're in London, so, some people do live outside of London these days, but there was no, and our clients are, are national, um, there was no obvious hook to, to, to single out community and, and I was sort of loath to, to, to make it a London based um, charity, particularly because people have, have grown up and worked elsewhere, um, so we didn't, um, and so we set it at, at, at a, a national coverage. And that worked really well. Um, we, 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 we've, we've got successful applicants um, in Middlesbrough, Birmingham, uh, down on the south coast in, in Devon. Um, I, but whilst also um, um, making sure we've got coverage within London. So there's um, a community group in, in North North London, the Running Academy I mentioned in South London. So it's um, it, we, we had a really broad church in terms of geographies and um, I think based on, on, on the amount of funding we can generate um, through the through the trust each year we'll, we'll do one per year and I think we'll, we'll, we'll run the same scope next next year um, because it's, it's, it's proven it's, it's proven to work very well great and and in terms I mean we you both talked a little bit about business benefit you did particularly Linda in in the end bit that you were saying where it's actually helping you with some of your bids. Can you expand a little bit on that, perhaps? Yeah, so, I mean, in nearly all bids, we would always try and express who we are in the com as a company in the round. So not just our technical expertise of what we can do, but what matters to us, our values, and how we actually live those. So now we're able to take the data that comes from the impact reports that Action Funder give us, telling us who we gave money to, how many people it directly benefited, what sort of benefits they were, and we're able to just transfer those straight into bids. And actually, especially for public sector bids, where you know part of the scoring will be around what you have done for that local area, then now we're able to directly um, boost ourselves up that rating for um, for winning work in the public sector. So, and as we mature with Action Fund, I think we'll only see more and more benefits come from that really. But Essentially, it's just made it easier for us to showcase the good work that we're doing, which was almost lost before. Humbly, you know, great, but off the, you know, below radar. And Oli, do you see any business benefit yet? Um, we I haven't um, sort of done any formal marketing on our site yet because I sort of wanted that. I wanted, I wanted to sort of produce a brochure. I probably. Um, catch up with you Sailor in, in the following weeks about producing th something like that that we then we, we, we advertise it on our website saying we've, we've partnered with Symbol and then I um, updated the website to say we were in live mode and I think um, so it doesn't get lost in the sort of December December fuzz and um, early in the new year there'll be a, a sort of third and final update as to here are the projects we funded and um, here are some of the you know updates we received um, just, to, just to show that really, you know, really hit targets and we're building into fund two in spring, which is, which is probably when we're raised and just keep that, that, that kind of dynamic up, I think, over the next few years. Um, it, as it, whether or not it, it benefits as, a, as an external business, it's, it's tricky to say, and I spoke about it with Assemble's PR team, because I think a lot of our, because, because we've got our own clients and they've got their head down on their own funding uh, objectives it probably doesn't um, and so for us it's an employee based um, you know uh, sort of uh, struggle to think of what the word is but um, you know uh, positive I guess um, you know it's it's it, it, it I think in this day and age it, it when you when you've got the ability to to, to raise money pro bono and um, we just don't want to be seen or, or feel like we are just purely you know uh, doing the day job Monday to Friday um, and, and, and the practicality of trying to do something outside of the day job without the, the, the support of uh, uh, something like Action, Action Funder was, was a pipe dream. So uh, for, for us, it's been very much employee uh, focused uh, together with the connection to the grantees. I think from a client perspective, 
um, I'm pretty, pretty agnostic. Yeah, that's fair enough. And, you know, that might yet come. I think what we're really clear is the stories. I mean, you know, you talked about it being a staff thing. That for a huge number of industries at the moment, talent recruitment and retention is one of their biggest challenges. Yeah. So actually being able to demonstrate that you have a set of values and you are living those values and you are making these positive contributions and you're enabling your staff to get involved in some of that decision making mm. is actually a massive good thing for the business in yeah. terms of holding on to their staff and keeping them motivated. Yeah, no, absolutely. No, I think I'm probably a bit of detail to, again, sort of using that um, the, the, the running academy example, but the connection uh, actually did come through whilst the, the funding was placed um, through the platform uh, the connection was through a new employee of ours um, Rose Harvey who um, she was the well she, 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 she was the second British female in this year's London Marathon so she's an almost professional uh, long distance runner outside of her day job her coach uh, Phil Kissy um, he's head, he heads up the academy and it was um, through Rose that we we made that donation. Obviously, the donations are going to Phil's other um, other uh, other other junior runners who are underprivileged. Um, but um, for Rose, as a new employee, um, she was really taken aback by by the the, 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 the firm's ability to, to deploy capital to another part of her wider life. Um, and so that's and, and and to that point, I think you know her loyalty to the firm her, her sort of um sort of um you know positivity it's it's not something you, you we could have otherwise achieved so that's been really nice and that's and that's taking an, a hybrid case where it's not purely been uh, a recipient found through the platform it's been something we um originated um ourselves but but ran it through the platform and ran it probably a lot better than we would have done offline well, I think that's, sorry amanda i was just gonna say I think that's really interesting i forgot to to mention that, that that as ours got more mature, we found that people were saying, well, actually, I know this group. Would it be OK to tell them about Action Funder and they can sign up? And so it was really good, actually, that it, it worked the other way as well. So, yeah, people were more deeply invested, which is nice. It's really nice. And, and interestingly, we're, we're currently running a promotion with Green King, which is all customer nominations. So customers in pubs or who buy their beer can scan a QR code and nominate their favourite community organisations to take part in a, a fund that they've put up on, on the Action Funder platform. And I think we haven't mentioned how much it costs to use the platform, but I guess I'd throw it back to you two. The cost, so people don't know, it's 5%. So if you make a fund of £10,000, then we would ask for £500. I think that's right, I've got my maths right, um, to pay for the upkeep and the admin of the platform. Do you both think that's value for money? unbelievably so yeah 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 unbelievably so we were we were handheld through all of our grants i mean it, it was you know if we'd have tried to employ interim resource to see us through that or consultancy or you know any of the the stuff that segalen and the team did for us it would have cost us an absolute fortune so yeah great value thank you Amanda. <laughs> that's, not just, that's not just financial cost either it's, it's a time cost the time, yeah, exactly yeah um, it would be really nice to hear from some of the other people on the call. So perhaps, do any can any of you tell us what you're currently doing in terms of your charitable giving? Michelle? Oh, I think I might <laughs> need to unmute myself then that quick. <laughs> um, so I, I suppose I'm coming at this from a slightly different perspective, that, that we are actually a, a social enterprise. Um, been in business for, for nigh on 40 years and we provide employment opportunities for people with disabilities. Um, we have in the last couple of probably last four years, we've realised that the ethos perhaps wasn't at the heart of, of the business as it should have been, uh, because it was tough times from, you know, we did actually go on to short time working, we've talked about redundancies, and we're now probably in the last four years at the most stable place that the business has ever been to the point where we're actually looking to open up a second factory and, you know, it's Life's, we, we live in the, the high life at the moment, uh, long may it continue, but we all know that that can turn as quickly as anything else. But in the last probably 18 months, we've done a lot more in regards to looking outside of the core ethos to pick in um, a company charity, which was voted for by our staff members. We actually picked the British Heart Foundation. We've done 
various things from bait sales to ridiculously and it sounds pathetic now when you've got a, an extreme marathon runner in the room but there was 10 of us that did the, the wolf run um, and when I say that we're pen pushers and um, we literally are pen pushers um, so that was a bit of a shock to the system but we can measure obviously the good that we do with that outside the ethos along with low you know we made a pledge to the this financial year and we'll make a pledge to the next financial year so we've got loads that that we are working on but we're not talking about monetary in the same level that you know uh, sir robert mcalpine b and blizz will be because we're, we're you know if we raise a couple of grand a year actually for a local charity or we're working with we're trying to introduce schools to um that need work doing to the local construction companies that um are, are bidding in the area uh, because obviously that's got social value to them so Ours is a bit of a different perspective, but so interesting to hear it from from the other side. Um, and I'm actually on your website now. If I if I turn the screen that way, uh, oh, yeah. just having a, a look around because I'll be honest, I didn't know a huge amount, but I think there's some stuff that we perhaps could do going forward. So I'd be happy to take that offline, Andrew, if, if you get a yeah. chance that we can have a chat. That would be great. And I think Linda wanted to rep reply because she's yeah, I was, I was just going to say, first of all, well done for the the run. Any run is an absolute achievement there's no competition in how far but um we noticed that our trial grant was three i think three thousand pound i can't remember but the grants that we did were small some of them were two thousand some of them were three thousand and that to a community group is an absolutely huge amount of money like we were really surprised i think we're so used to doing big scale corporate mm. giving at what people were asking for and they were asking for one thousand five hundred pounds and that would sort out you know free haircuts for people for like a year and you're just like okay that well you can have so much impact mm. with with the different sizes of grants so I think that that we found that really to, to I wouldn't let the scale of giving and how you direct it limit you having a great impact oh I, I literally was not aware of schemes like that so it's definitely something that that we'd like to to get involved with without a doubt uh, and see how we can build on it along with obviously keeping in line with with our core ethos as well yeah and i'm really happy to pick up with you about your um, your business offline as well and understand oh, about you might your... have an email in your inbox already if I'm <laughs> <laughs> yeah, excellent. excellent the joy of an interview <laughs> did you want to jump in uh, no, but everything that you've been saying is really interesting. We are kind of in terms of size. I work for YoYo. I'm the head of operations at YoYo. We are a digital agency. Uh, we are about 25 people. So it's, um, yeah, we're not massive, but we're doing as individuals quite uh, a lot of different things. And from what you've been saying, having a more of a unified approach to it um, is sounds and something that you can evidence afterwards it sounds like a really good idea um my only question to you amanda i suppose is um you said about the five percent but is there a minimum kind of um fund uh size i suppose that 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 you would have so is there a minimum expectation of the amount raised um i'm actually going to ask james to answer that question yeah. Uh, hi, hi, Martina. Yeah, that's a good question. So, yeah, we recommend funds don't really go below a total size of £5,000. And just to clarify what, um, just to build on what Linda was saying, our sort of language, we, we call a fund the sort of total pot of money that you're giving away. And then the individual grants are the amount that a, a project or a charity can, can win. And so those grant amounts can be as low as £500. Um, so they can be small awards. Um, but the total fund size should not really go below 5,000 because it, in order to really make an impact, you know, starting at that amount is a really good base level. And, and just to give you a, a few more examples, Michelle, to, on your on your example, you know, we've, we've got a handful of funders at the moment that are live with, with that minimum size of 5,000 and already seeing a really good um, impact, you know, with smaller grants of say a thousand. And then you've got a really small portfolio of five great projects, maybe really local to your office or across the country, but you can go on to actionfunder.org and, and see the, the, the funds there and take a look if you're interested to, to see what they look like. Thank you very much. Great question, Martina. And I think also just to echo what Linda was saying, the joy here is that, you know, brilliant to be giving to the British Heart Foundation, but your ability to connect directly with them is, is quite small. Whereas here, you know, Linda is able to promote through her social media 
the work of tiny organizations doing stuff on the ground, which is invaluable for them in terms of raising their awareness and creating that really authentic connection with a community project. So um, I think we're coming to the end unless anyone wants to jump in very, very quickly. And also, as Perrine's just saying, you can see the projects on the Action Funder website. And there are some brilliant ones for 500 pounds. There's a Norse Bags one, which for 500 pounds that they can make uh, reusable bags out of canvas and give them away for free for about a year and a half. So, you know, so this is what's so exciting about supporting community organizations. They really can make a huge, a tiny bit of money go a really, really long way. So I think I'd just like to stop now because we promised you 45 minutes and it's 47. Um, by saying a huge thank you to Linda and to Ollie for joining us and sharing the insights from their organisations and what they've been doing with their charitable giving. Thank you, that was fantastic. And also to you for joining us this lunchtime, giving up some of your time to listen to us. I hope it was interesting. Please do get back in touch. You've got us on LinkedIn. Uh, we're very responsive. We'd love to hear from you if you've got questions or you'd like to talk about whether or not you can in a position to set up a fund or nominate groups to come on to Action Funder. Please do get in touch. And thanks very much to everybody and the team for organizing this, by the way. Thanks, Amanda. Happy Giving Tuesday, everybody. Yes, Happy Bravo. Giving Tuesday. And Perrine. Just a tiny thing, if you're interested, but you'll be able to book a demo of Action Funder really soon. So if you just want to have like a quick look around of what it looks like and how you can set up a fund, they'll just be them possibility to do this as well from the website ah. thank you very much everybody enjoy thank giving everyone. tuesday take Bye. care bye-bye